on set with Bing. Number one, Google Publisher Toolbar, a plugin for Chrome. If you use Google AdSense or if you are a YouTube partner who uses Google AdSense, it creates a really handy little button at the top of your browser that brings down figures for your estimated earnings over that day and week and month. As long as you are signed into the Google account that is associated with your AdSense, you have no problem checking what's going on in your AdSense without actually having to go to AdSense.com. Number two. Uber. There are a lot of taxi apps out there, but this one was recommended to me by a friend because of its referral system where you get $10 credit towards your cab rides when you refer a friend. If you'd like to join Uber, my referral link is in the description. You don't even have to ever use it, you could just sign up using my referral link and I get $10. It is a little bit more expensive than some services, so it's not for everyone. I used it to get home the other night and the service was lovely and I gave the driver five stars and the phone told me his name and where he's from and how many kids he has. Number three, TweetDeck scheduling. Most people who use Twitter a lot are aware of TweetDeck even if they don't use it, but they may not be aware that it was recently acquired by Twitter officially. To use TweetDeck in its current form, you have to get a TweetDeck account, which is separate from your Twitter account. I'm usually not a fan of getting excess accounts for things that I don't feel are necessary, but it's my favorite current Twitter desktop client, so I decided to go for it, and I discovered one very good upside. Previous or existing services that offer you scheduled tweets have always been sketchy to me and have never worked 100%. But TweetDeck now, because it has an account system in the cloud and is fully affiliated with Twitter and its current API, means that scheduling tweets for when your computer is going to be off or when you're going to be in bed works. It actually works and I'm using it particularly to run the PBFB rerun Twitter. Number four, iTunes Match. So for a very long time I avoided updating iTunes because change scares me and every time they update iTunes it scares me a little bit more and they make it really bad and childlike and mega -like. With the update comes an invitation to iTunes Match a service which basically copies your existing iTunes library and puts it on the cloud so that any of your devices can access it while you're on the move. It matches things that you've bought from the store or that can be bought from the store so that you can stream from the store rather than using up your own space allowance and anything else that it can't match gets copied up onto the iTunes cloud. It's basically Apple being like, oh, we have to do something to stop Spotify. Ah! And to be honest, it's kind of working. For a while I was using Spotify a lot more than iTunes and now I'm kind of using them both in tandem and it works. One problem I would point out is that using it on my phone has been problematic. So I get on a train and my phone says I have 250,000 billion songs that I can listen to, but no, I can't really, can I? Because I don't have the signal to be able to stream them. And as it stands, there seems to be no way to differentiate what's already on the phone and what's in the cloud. So I have to remember what's been downloaded to my phone and scroll through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artists that I have in my library to get to the thing that won't take a million years to stream. So I actually turned it off on my phone, but I use it on my tablet and I use it on my laptop, which is not where my main iTunes library is stored. And at like 25 pounds a year, that's pretty rad. Number five, Last.fm Mobile Scrubbler. Again, this is a musical one. I've been a user of the website Last.fm since before it was even merged with Last.fm, back when it was called Audio Scrubbler. I've had an account on that site since the year it started. And that whole time, pretty much, I've been recording everything that I've listened to on my iTunes or Spotify or any other player. It's absolutely pure masturbation. I just like to look at it sometimes and be like, oh yeah, that month I listened to a lot of Mew. So a music player will sell itself to me if it can scrubble to Last FM, which iTunes has never natively offered, but Spotify offered immediately on its release. It's taken them a while, but Last FM have finally released an app that scrubbles from your Apple devices by playing music in iTunes, but through their app, it's not 100% what we want. Like you can't have it running in the background and scrobbling from your iTunes. You have to use Last.fm to play the music, which then uses iTunes to play the music. And you have to have that front end open in order to scrobble, which is a pain, but it's a lot better than the previous system where you had to listen to all your music and then connect it to your computer and wait for it to ask whether you wanted to scrobble your plays to Last.fm and sometimes it wouldn't work like most of the time it wouldn't work. Six, messages for Mac. Now this has existed for a very long time. I am not claiming that this is new, but my friend Evan showed it to me the other day and blew my mind because I had no idea it existed. Messages for Mac is basically a desktop version of the messages app that you have on your iPhone, allowing you to send texts and iMessages and picture messages 
to your mobile contacts from your desktop. A lot of the time I will miss a text because my phone is on one side of the room and I'm on the other side of my room on my laptop. But now when I get a text, I get a little pop-up alert on my laptop screen and I'm able to read it and respond to it within my laptop. So that's changed the way that I text. I'm actually getting a lot better at replying because anyone who knows me knows that I don't reply very often because I'm a bad person. Seven, PayPal here. Now there's not that much information I can give about this because it is not out yet. PayPal are launching a mobile card reader that you can Bluetooth to your your mobile device. So when selling things or invoicing people on the go, you can input an amount and then hand them the chip and pin reader as you would in a shop. For someone like me who sells merchandise at expos, this is going to be a fantastic way to take card payments without having to invest in a card reader, which you usually have to rent. So I'm excited about that and I've signed up to the mailing list to you know, here when it is launched. Number eight, incognito for two Google accounts. Like a lot of people, I have more than one Google account. I actually have like six Google accounts and it is a constant drain on my brain to keep it all in one place. But the ones I access the most are the ones associated with Slow Mo Zovo and Bing Radio. I use Google Chrome and almost always I have a regular window and a incognito window open at the same time so that I can be logged into two separate Google accounts. I don't mind about keeping things secret or losing the history. I just like being able to have two sessions running at the same time without having to log out and in or run two different kinds of browser. So that's eight tech things that I recommend to you. I didn't have to make it 10. There's no rules. In the comments, let me know whether they were new to you, whether you already use them or whether you use something better and recommend other apps that I should try. Also tell me if you would like to see more of this kind of video. Bing Radio is a big old experiment at the moment. I'm throwing out loads of different types of things and seeing which ones you respond to. And if there's something you want to hear more about, you let me know. Simple as that. Uh, I'll see you around. Yeah.